This video is gonna be all about chickens. I first added chickens to my yard last year. So these girls were both born on December 1st. I picked them up at the stock shop in Glendale and raised them basically from the time they were three days old. Chickens are a popular addition to home gardens because they do offer a lot of benefits. Uh, they will help with your insect situation as they seek out and eat bugs in your soil. Obviously, if you feed them an organic diet, they're gonna be a source of organic eggs for you so they can help feed you and your family. Uh, these girls both produce an egg a day. These girls are both Black Star or Sex Link chickens. They're a special breed of chicken where there's pretty much a guarantee that you'll know the sex or gender of your chicken by the coloring when they're chicks. So when you go to buy chicks at like Tractor Supply or any of your feed stores, there's no guarantee that you're going to get a female chick unless you get a Sex Link variety. I wanted to ensure that I was not going to get a rooster, so I went with this variety. There are also golden sex link and red sex link um, chickens. And all that is is a different coloring. Their temperaments and behaviors pretty much consistent across the board. Black star chickens are a cross between a barred rock and a Rhode Island red. They are not a broody type. Uh, they can also double as pets, as I have found. Really, this video is geared towards someone who's maybe thinking about chickens, but doesn't really know much about them, you know, never grew up having one, similar to my situation. Hopefully I can uh, share some tips with you on some things that came up that were unexpected, and also just care, making sure that these chickens are comfortable in our environment and thriving. A very important aspect with chickens is housing. And really you should be thinking about housing um, even when they're chicks because they grow up quickly uh, and you'll find that you run out of time. So once the chick is fully feathered or if you buy a pullet, you're gonna need a space for them to sleep at night, to roost, as well as to lay eggs. So this right here is actually a kit that I purchased from Tractor Supply believe it was $300. Um, it is topped off by a roof. This is like a corrugated plastic material. And I've actually found it to be uh, pretty good keeping water out of the coop. Uh, so that's one way to go um, for a fairly easy installation. Um, I did some make some modifications. So um, down below, I actually raised this up using cinder block with caps and the house is actually sitting right on top of that. That does a couple things. Predators can't dig under. And it's also raised up because um, one of the easiest ways to clean your, your coop floor is to use sand. When the girls leave their poop, it's very easy for me to scoop that up Sand is also a nice thing because the girls like to dust bathe and they will do that within the sand as well. Uh, the best kind of sand is actually to, to buy construction sand, something that has 
um, coarse materials in it, little rocks, um, just so that it doesn't clump up as much. You don't really want to get play sand, you want more of the building type sand. This kit, as you can see, it's made out of wood and then also hardware cloth. And you can see there's an access door out here, and that allows you to actually attach a run so that they can go out um, when they want to get some more space and exercise. Uh, you're definitely going to want some place for them to roost. So this, this one already had a roosting bar um, right there. And then I actually created another one. I used a steel um, rod pin and put galvanized steel pipe over that and clamped that onto a 2x2. Two two. Open up the door so you can see inside here. So this is where they sleep. You can see another uh, pair of roosting bars. So that's generally where they, they sleep. Uh, the substrate down here, this is all pine shavings, which is really the best to use for them. Um, when they do chew on these, especially when they're young, it's not toxic like cedar. So that's what I'd recommend. Um, this back panel actually opens. I opt to not use that door because what happens is if you open it, it's hinged and your um, pine shavings will actually fall out and they'll um, fall into the crease there in the hinge and make it impossible to close. So this door really stays closed and latched. Um, you can see straight back there's a ventilation window there that slides open. So this kit actually came with um, some boards that really acted as a partition for their nesting boxes. There's really no need to keep them. Um, I don't need to have partitions for them. And they rarely lay eggs at the same time. I only have two. So I got rid of that. And you can see that they've made little depressed areas in both spots. And this is where they choose to lay their eggs. So beyond your materials for the coop, whether you go with the kit or you know build your own, you're going to want to put it in a good location, a place where they're going to be in shade, especially with the breed of chickens I have. They do have black feathers, so a little bit more sensitive to the, the sun based on that heat absorption. So I want to ensure that where I put this coop, it was very sheltered and shaded. So you can see I've got bamboo really framing both sides of this, there's Alphonse car on the right and the giant timber on the left there. Um, likewise, this Royal Point Sienna provides quite a bit of coverage overhead for filtered light. So this area stays very shaded. Another thing you're going to have to think about is whether you're going to allow your chickens to free range or not. I personally do a hybrid. I allow them to, to free range when I'm sure that they're protected, when I'm around, when I'm home, essentially. I do have a walled in backyard, so, you know, I don't have um, stray dogs potentially coming in or, and harming them. There's definitely the chance of harm to them from a cat. I have neighbors that have cats. I've seen cats in my yard. They can definitely jump up to a six foot wall and come in. And while there aren't too many stories of cats attacking chickens, it's been known to happen. So I don't take chances with that. I'm always home if I'm gonna allow them to free range. When the chickens are not free ranging during the day, they need a secure pen to play in when they're inside. So moose coops, like I mentioned, this one had a side exit which makes it very simple to attach a run to. So nothing elaborate here. Um, I went simple and cheap. Um, basically sunk four six foot T posts on my four corners. And then I used just very lightweight uh, garden fencing, this green stuff that's quite flexible, um, which made it easy to basically take a piece of that and then attach it to the hardware cloth. That way it gives it a nice tight seal all the way down. I did opt to put some welded fence material around this bamboo that's inside their run just because they were 
getting a little too aggressive with the young shoots and killing them off and I wanted to protect uh, those tender new shoots so just have some fence material around there. Um, each side is approximately 12 feet long and then the width is about seven feet. I was able to just uh, attach a spare garden fence that I had. Just used these little clamps to attach the door. I can swing it out when I need access in here. But just a really simple run. When they go in for the night, I just close this door up. That way, you know, sure nothing can get in, not even rodents, you know, to disturb their food or them. Another aspect of care is keeping your chickens cool when it's triple digits outside. Uh, chickens do not like temperatures even in the high 90s, certainly not in the hundreds. When temperatures exceed 98 degrees, I turn on this mister for them. It's actually a misting fan and it keeps them cool. You can always set a timer if you're not home during the day to turn it on and off. Uh, the other thing that's important is shade. So here you can see I've got 90% shade cloth up in this little run that they stay in in the late afternoon. And they also have some coverage from bamboo here. To show you how effective misting can be for your chickens, I have this infrared thermometer. The air temp right now is like 103, but this uh, mulch that's in the shade but not in the path of the mist is reading at 10, just just under 106. And in the path of the mist, it's coming in at 84 degrees. So 20 degree change there. This is about the only noise they make. And this is their excitement over an egg being laid. Certainly less than a dog barking on the decibel level. So digging up the yard was not something that I really expected. Um, as you can see, they're digging up near a fairly established mandarin tree. It's not a baby, so, you know, they're not going to necessarily do any damage to the tree. They might hit some roots in the course of this, but it's not a big deal. But this digging is going to affect other plants in your yard. Um, I had a lot of frustration early on because these girls would basically dig up all the starts that I had. So, you know, I planted a lot of watermelon, um, 12 papayas actually, and none of them made it. Obviously, they're not going to care about what they're digging up or around. So, one thing that I have employed in my yard is the use of caging. Well, not the most attractive solution, it does work. And what I do is basically cage off anything that's sensitive. So, any of my young starts, like this ice cream bean tree in front, um, I'm going to wrap a cage around uh, like this kumquat tree only because it's just getting established this year. Certainly my tropicals that are a little bit more tender like this chibota cava, um, even pots, containers, uh, you wouldn't think it but they will actually uh, put their claws into uh, containers, knock them over and dig into them. So. Even sensitive container plants you're going to want to protect. So you can just easily achieve this with some welded fencing material and then I just use these uh, J-style rebar pins to secure uh, this to each side. So you can see if I pull up on it, it's not going anywhere. Um, I also put the emitter on the inside because 
they will have a tendency with the uh, poly tubing, the micro tubing, at least that's attached to that, to move it out of place. Um, another useful material for when I'm wanting to cover a larger area is I will actually um, use this folding style portable exercise pen for a dog. So it's about three feet high and what's nice is you can latch together multiple panels to create a large area that's enclosed. So I essentially have this caging on all my mango trees. You know, some that are quite small. So beyond the fact that you're going to have to protect your plants, also get used to the fact that if you put your mulch a certain way, you know, it's all leveled out and nice, that's all going to change. They will uh, dig up your mulch and move it all over the place, you know, kick it up into piles, leaving these little ditches all over the place. I've tripped on them. So that's one thing to get used to again if you're free ranging them um, and you care about how your garden looks, you may want to fence off areas because they will definitely change things up. Another thing that comes up with chickens is dust baths. That is their way of keeping clean. You keep them in a run, that's a pretty easy task. You just give them some soil in a bin and they'll go to town on that. If you let them free range, they're going to take dust baths in their preferred location. I did really desire this area for dust bathing and they are not the most delicate of girls. So they'll bump into plants, but get pretty worked up as they get into that soil. We'll be digging up um, a shallow ditch, essentially, and rolling around in it. So you'll see some footage up ahead of the girls enjoying a dust bath. But just be mindful of, of dust baths, um, their need for that, and that they may not take those baths again in an area that you would most like. Let's talk bugs. Chickens will eat bugs, but they're not going to go after only pests of the garden. They're going to go after all the insects that they find delicious. And if there's one bug that chickens love, it's worms. Those are beneficial for our gardens, but with these girls, especially initially when my garden was just loaded with them when they first came in, uh, they slurp them up like chicken noodle soup out of the ground, and I've noticed a decline in my worm population. They're doing such a good job with uh, insects that they've actually decreased my worm populations. So that's just one thing to think about if you let them again free range in your garden. Um, yes, they will get rid of the uh, negative insects like scorpions, but they're also going to decrease your worm populations. So potentially put in a protected area for worms. Not only will your chickens eat weeds that you find, you know, obnoxious, so that's a benefit, um, but they will also eat much of what they can get their beaks on. So what I found is these girls really love roses. I have a lot of fig trees in the yard and a lot of fruit, so I'm not worried about it, but you know, if you've only got a few fruits and they're kind of low hanging like this, don't be surprised if your chicken jumps up and grabs the fruit.
So it's recommended that if you add chickens that you have at least two in your backyard and that's because they're very social. They really need each other. So eggs cost about $6 to get free range organic eggs, you know, it sprouts uh, once a week. Compare that to the cost of getting uh, the chickens set up. So, you know, the, the brooder set up, uh, all the food um, supplies, you know, their, their feeding dish, their watering dish, uh, their housing, you know, buying the coop, the construction materials, the paint, their run, you know, all the materials to, to fence that in. So if you're looking at this from just a financial perspective, then you probably don't want to go down the road of adding chickens to your backyard. Now, a lot of the issues that I brought up uh, are caused because they're allowed to free range. So why don't I just keep them, you know, confined to their run and coop? When I open up the door to their, their coop, you know, in the morning to let them out, they just race out like kids going to, to recess or something. They, they so enjoy running around free in the yard. So to me, that was important to give them that, that freedom. So you might be asking a couple questions. Would I do this again? And the answer is, yes, I would. Um, I put a lot of the infrastructure in. So a lot of the upfront investment is done. Um, and I do really enjoy them, but they do take a lot of work. And I probably wouldn't do this again until I'm, I'm retired because I do work full time. The other question is, um, you have two, would you consider adding more? Uh, for me, the answer would be no on that. Two is perfectly good for me. You know, I do live in an HOA, so I need to keep the noise levels at a minimum. They certainly keep me in enough um, eggs for the week, you know, 14 eggs a week, essentially, with the two of them. Um, plenty of manure for the plants. So. I really don't want or need more than, than two. Hopefully this video has given you insights and more ideas about having chickens in your backyard. Thanks for watching and happy gardening.